Hi everyone, here's the Book Chemist once again. Today I'm reviewing Kaluki Nights by Howard Jacobson. Whenever I read a new book, and even more so if it's the first book I read by a new writer, I tend to approach it by knowing as little as I possibly can about the book and the writer, which includes avoiding the endorsements and the review excerpts on the cover, on the back cover, and so on and so forth. But this thing is covered in them, and in the course of my reading my eye wander toward them once or twice, and I must confess this book might have the most puzzling endorsement and review excerpts I've read in a long time. Even just on the front cover it's described as hilarious and heartbreaking by two different newspapers. And different reviewers describe the book like some kind of silly, light-hearted comedy, while others paint it as a tremendous, extremely serious tragedy. And I think this ambiguity says something very relevant and very interesting about Kaluki Knights. Kaluki Knight's protagonist, Max, is a cartoonist. He is a satirist and a comic book artist. He has written picture books and graphic novels, but he mainly always describes himself as a cartoonist. And in the cartoonist profession, already you find implied this tendency to joke and make fun of the most tragic passages of, hi of history, and in his case, the history of his people. Max is Jewish-British, grew up in Manchester, in a Jewish neighborhood, while at the same time also, but by making fun of them, pointing at them, and in a way obsessing over them, and obsessing over these impossibly bleak and tragic and dark topics. This very basic but very powerful tension is at the heart of the novel, is perceivable through it all, and I'm still not quite sure whether the novel balances out these two tensions, or whether the tragedy of it all triumphs, whether the the tragedy and the impossible monstrosity of the events that befell the Jewish people throughout their history, most notably the Holocaust, but also the revisionism of recent decades, inevitably cancel and blots out the laughter and the irony that can be found in the resistance to these events, in the way people reacted and carry on living past them. I definitely think that Kaluki Nights is one of the most tragic, one of the darkest books I've read in recent terms. It is heartbreaking, it is fun, it definitely isn't hilarious. Whoever wrote the review for the Sunday Telegraph is not a very good reviewer, or at least they weren't in this case. I said at the beginning that I tend to approach new authors knowing as little as possible about them, but I wasn't really able to do so for Jacobson. When I was doing my PhD, my supervisor David Browner was writing a critical text about Jacobson. Um, it's forthcoming. Uh, if I remember, I will put a link uh, to the book in the description box once it comes out. And when he was working on it, I helped him out by collecting newspaper articles and opinion pieces and all sorts of writing by Howard Jacobson, who, other than being a novelist, is also a journalist, he is a literary critic, he writes nonfiction extensively. And the impression I got from reading his articles and, and pieces was that of a very funny writer, with, maybe with a wry, maybe with a rambunctious kind of humor, maybe lewd at times, occasionally, sure, but a f damn funny author nonetheless. And I won't deny that I found myself laughing out loud a couple of times in the course of the reading. Some of the jokes in here are tremendously funny, but some of the jokes are sadder than the tragic parts. If you take one thing away from this review is that Kaluki Nights is not a light reading, it's not hilarious. Don't walk into this expecting a Jonathan Coe novel. In fact, I would go as far as to say that Kaluki Nights is one of the most difficult novels I've read in quite a long time. Both because of its themes, it deals with, again, some of the most catastrophic passages in recent history, and with very difficult themes on a more personal level, on the level of the characters' experiences. One of the protagonists in here, probably the most central character in the novel, even more important than narrator protagonist Max, is somebody who came out of prison, came out of imprisonment, decades after he committed a terrible crime, and the other characters now have to deal with him now that he's out. The book deals with abuse, it deals with families being torn apart and lives ruined by or blindness, by ignorance. But it's not just the themes that make it so difficult. Kaluki Nights is extremely dense, and the way it presents its events 
is not always extremely easy to follow. This is a novel with m many characters, it stretches several decades in the life of Max, and it jumps here and there. A chapter here might focus on a specific character back in the Crumsall in Manchester in the 1950s, and then the next chapter moves back to 21st century London. But this is not the juxtaposing schizophrenic, um, wandering back and forth through time of a postmodern novel. This is more the kind of constant digression you find in a Philip Roth novel. And I've said it, uh, and I regret it, Howard Jacobson is usually defined as the British Philip Roth, probably because of his brand of humor, definitely because of the, his, um, the, the Jewish themes that are often at the heart of his fiction. And I think it's very difficult for writers and for artists in general, where you are associated with another artist, it's very, it tends to be unfair to your over. People tend to look at you through a lens that might not necessarily be what you intended for the work or what the work uh, merits or deserves or what not. What I do believe is that our Jacobson definitely has that same kind of Philip Roth's that tendency to digress uh, that you find in works like Poor Noise Complaint, you find in novels like Everyman, the way in which his narrators do not really follow a linear narrative, but might spend an entire chapter describing an event that will only become relevant and will only make sense in the mind of the reader and in the narrative balance of the novel much later on. The point, I think, is that this kind of digressiveness, this wandering away from the main course of the plot, if the novel can be said to have one, and I do believe that there is a main plot in the novel, I'm not sure it's handled brilliantly across the novel. I must confess that while I was reading Kaluki Nights definitely for the first half of the novel, I wasn't enjoying it very much. This, once more, it's a very dense novel, it's full of very stimulating reflections on how to deal with some of the most difficult questions in uh, recent history. It's, it, 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 it's filled with stimulating, contradictory, difficult characters acting horribly with one another and surprising you with the occasional moment of beauty and with the occasional moment of kindness toward one another. But I also felt that it was difficult to connect properly with the inner workings of these characters and with the significance of their lives. A good example would be uh, Max's ex-wife Chloe and Max's ex-wife Zoe, both of who are well, they're described in the novel in different ways as horrible anti-Semites and kind of monstrous in many ways. Which is fine, there are horrible people out there and Kaluki Knights will definitely remind you of many of the worst historically. And because of that, it's, it's simply fair that horrible characters also exist. But it's very difficult to understand, for most of the novel, at least it was for me, what kind of relevance these people could have in Max's life, what kind of relationship they shared, why did they become his wives if they were such monsters? And I totally understand that it's just the way the narrative is shaped, that a lot of information on many of these characters is only really provided to the reader in the very final chapters of the novel, in the last 100, 200 pages of a 500 page book. I, for that reason, I feel like Kaluki Nights will definitely be a great book uh, to reread, to approach through a different perspective once you have the stories of the characters in your mind, once you have their significance in the plot, in the narrative, call it what you will, once you have that clear. But it also meant that it was difficult really to assess what was happening and to make heads or tails of the narrative while you while I was experiencing it for the first time. And the same is true of that main plot I mentioned. It felt like nothing at all was happening in that main plot for 300 plus pages. And then it turns very, well, very thrilling, I would I want to say, very mysterious. It, like, the book at once almost assumes the tones almost of a noir, but that only really happens in the last, what, 100 pages, even less. I'm not really saying this to complain. You can't really complain because a book's narrative is complex. It's a bit like complaining about a painting because it's red. What does that even mean? I'm saying that because this book is peopled by beautifully depicted, beautifully represented characters full of the contradictions and, um, well, tragedies and, and beauties of 
human beings themselves, I'm not 100% sure that it needed this kind of complex narrative. I'm not 100% sure that it benefits the novel that these events were portrayed this way. In, in many ways, this is quite rare. Most novels tend to be very interesting and very stimulating and thrilling in their main part, and then the endings tend to be sort of disappointing because it's, well, it's just very difficult to tie together all the different plots and all the different narrative strands into a satisfying ending. Uh, whereas here it's the very opposite, you have a somewhat confusing and meandering central part that then heads very neatly to a beautiful finish line and to an extremely powerful final couple of sentences. For all that I was puzzled or at least surprised by its narrative structure, I greatly admired Kaluki Nights in its courage, in its ambitiousness, as it tackles some of the most complex and impossible questions. How do we deal with the monstrosity of recent history? How do we deal with people who deny that monstrosity, with revisionists, who, as the novel very, very beautifully points out, somehow, somehow deny uh, the extent of the catastrophe and of the the crimes that were perpetrated against the Jewish people, while at the same time sort of betraying the fact that they wish it had all happened, that their hatred is there, and that they're not speaking from a point of honesty, but they're speaking from a point of great darkness and of horrible, horrible hate. Countless different characters in the novel have different views about how Jewish people should deal with their condition in Israel, in Britain, anywhere in the world. Should the Jewish people try and assimilate in their societies? Should they maintain their separate identity? Should they try and forgive what happened? Should they not? And all of these different views are balanced in their contradictions, in their rights, in their wrongs. They are balanced all together in a way that doesn't just acknowledge that these, are, these questions remain unanswered, but even more importantly, it points to the fact that these are important questions and they deserve to be considered and people have to think about them and have to dedicate their time to them. And that is what great literature does. And I am convinced that Kalukina is is a great novel and I'm positive or at, least, or at least hopeful that I won't forget many of its great complex characters for a long time and I'm sure that I will keep uh, thinking about the question some of the points it raised for a very long time and I will keep going back to them even before I decide to reread the novel. What did you think of Kaluki Nights? Do you agree that it's so difficult and dense as they make it out to be? Because many of the reviewers, going back to those ex excerpts I mentioned at the beginning, talk, ab talk of the book as if it's some kind of light comic, very entertaining novel, which it's, it is entertaining, but I wouldn't say it's light in any possible way. What did you think? And if you are Jacobson fans, what do you think about the rest of his oeuvre? Uh, what's your favorite Jacobson novel? Let me know whatever um, passes through your mind. Let's discuss the book in the comment section, as always. And thank you for watching the review. Bye, everyone.